Okay, so now I'll introduce our speaker, James Highsmith, a recent UMass graduate who's going to talk about wind energy. So, please, welcome. Welcome, James. I used to sit like right here uh, four years ago, maybe three years ago. Uh, so I was in the same position. Um, uh, I'll tell you my experience, that's all I can do. Um, I don't know everything on the subject, it's a huge field. Um, but hopefully we can cover a lot today. Um, so what do I do? Who am I? Um, I went here to UMass Amherst. I was a BDIC student. I studied renewable energy and sustainable design. As I said, I took this class with John Gerber. I um, also took out a couple other classes, which were awesome. Um, agricultural systems thinking really uh, opened my mind on how you can sort of think about a problem and uh, how to find solutions uh, in a holistic way. Um, here at UMass, you have a great uh, resource if you're interested in uh, wind energy. It's a renewable energy lab. It's been around for about 40 years. Um, if you didn't know it already, this is the basically the backbone of the global wind power industry. Uh, it basically started here at UMass um, in a little tin shed over by the uh, engine. What do I do right now? Um, as you see before, I work for a company called Scala. We're based out of Reno. Um, if you can't see it, there's a person on that blade right there. Uh, that's what we do. We go out and we play on wind turbines. These things are massive. That blade is 45 meters long. Um, the towers are 85 meters tall. So 45 meters, this is like well over 100 feet, 130 feet. Uh, and these things are dynamic. So when the wind blows, you're moving. It's like a sailboat. It's pretty awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, when I was here at UMass, I was like, all right, what's my ideal job? Right? All right. Green energy, it's awesome. I don't want to be at a desk. I can't do it. I want to be outdoors. And this is everything all wrapped in one. What do we do? We, we inspect blades, see if there are any cracks. These things are moving, those tips when they're moving at full speed are going over 200 kilometers an hour. So they are whipping. Um, so sometimes things hit them. Uh, see, so this is my office. I'm hanging out, it's about 300 feet off the ground, smiling, loving life. This is down in Texas, uh, which is basically the wind capital. Uh, right, what, do I, what do I do? I think I went over it a little bit. Um, industrial rope access for Scala Group. Uh, we're based out of Reno. Um, so what's O&M, operation and maintenance? It's a blade inspection, blade repair. Um, we replace things on the blades like DG strips, vortex generators, they help the blades um, spin more efficiently so they generate more power. Um, been to a lot of um, OWEA conferences. If you want any information on, on wind power, go to OWEA.org. Um, they're an amazing resource. I didn't have the money to go to the conferences at first, so I volunteered. And so I was the youngest person in the room by about 20 years, surrounded by all the big dogs. So this is me and my friend Brian. We just did a blade inspection. We're propelling off the blades. If you can see our shadows down at the bottom um, on the cornfields. It's pretty amazing. The footprint of these wind turbines are so small, the farmers can still farm underneath. So they're losing a small amount of crop. And then they're gaining um, an income from the turbines, which is probably around $5,000 a year to have a, a turbine on your property. So some of these guys have 100 turbines on their land. So it's an additional um, income for the farmers, which is really key. Uh, we wake up at 4.35 in the morning before the sun rises. Get to take beautiful pictures like this. Go work a 12 hour day. There's more work out there because of the turbines than we can possibly accomplish. Uh, so they need qualified people to go out there and, and work on these wind farms. Uh, I'll show you some statistics on how much it grew last year. But uh, I mean, this, and this industry is right. It's booming. It's, it's the fastest growing energy source in the world. Um, right now, uh, the U.S. is the number one uh, producer in the world. We just passed Germany, I believe. Industry grew an amazing rate last year. I believe it's 58%. Um, 
I need to double check that, but it's definitely around the 50% uh, mark. Um, for the leader in the world right now, the, the U.S. portfolio in wind is about 1%. So 1% of our energy from these lights, 1% comes from wind power. By 2030, the, the Department of Energy, the DOE, um, just came out with a report saying that we want to bring that number up to 20%. Um, so not only do we want to increase our piece of the pie, but the pie is also getting bigger. So this is a typical wind turbine, the Siemens 2.3 megawatt um, wind turbine. As I said before, those blades are about 45 meters long. Um, power is about 85 meters tall. So this is inside looking out. Kind of looks like a space shuttle. Um, these are a nice turbine because the doors open up. So there's lots of space and air. This is the, uh, the generator. So this is the where all the electricity is produced. And then we have the gearbox, which is that big blue um, machine that Chris is uh, standing on right there. That brings the, the speed of the main shaft coming from the blade spinning down to the optimal um, RPMs for the generator to produce uh, electricity. Um, so as I said, Siemens 2.3 turbine is a probably six million dollar turbine. It's uh, about 150 million kilowatt hours over the lifetime of the project. And if we can sell that electricity to, um, say, Instar for 10 cents a kilowatt hour, we can have a, a revenue of $15 million. So offshore wind energy. I started in 2008. Uh, it's an offshore, basically it was my thesis here at UMass um, for BDIC. We are developing an offshore wind farm. Phase one is a five gigawatt wind farm. Uh, this is a thousand turbines offshore off the coast of New England. Uh, water depths uh, between five and 45 meters. This is current technology. It's already in use in Europe. Um, this stuff is happening now. We just need to translate it and bring it to the U.S. Um, and I was a little surprised that I wanted to give to you guys and John. Um, so back when I started, um, sophomore year, I started this little textbook company. A lot of students on campus would trade textbooks, save money. It was pretty awesome. And I started for $1,000. Um, and basically, my, my company I started now, I started for a little more, but I wanted to um, See what everyone's ideas are. Um, if you're interested, if you have an idea, I would love to hear it. Um, if you have a business idea, a project idea, I would love to hear it. Um, basically, if you want to write a two-page sort of summary of your idea, whatever it is, the crazier the better, the more ridiculous, whatever, some kind of way that we can become more sustainable as a society, I want to hear it. Um, so basically, I'm offering uh, $1,000 and guidance as someone who's sort of been through the startup process uh, a couple times. Um, and I'd love to sort of see what people's ideas are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.